All right, thank you, Rick. So for I'm focused on manure use and soil physical properties this afternoon. Um, we have a lot of soil property interaction, interaction. So soil is mostly inanimate, 99.5% uh, on a dry weight basis. But it does provide habitat for much plant and microbial life and also for a lot of chemistry. The, manage, the science and managements of interactions of soil properties, such as physical, chemical, and biological with crops and climate is what we call agronomy. Now I realize that all of you have had some sense of this, but maybe you haven't uh, been accustomed to thinking of it this way, but, but, um, but it's the case. And for me, it's a very important consideration. There are some soil physical properties that are important to how much crop response and soil response we get from manure application. And that could include landscape position, soil texture, soil aggregation, susceptibility to erosion. And then there are physical properties that are affected by manure. Aggregation, for instance, soil aggregation, soil water infiltration, and some others. Uh, and then susceptibility to erosion is another physical property of much concern. We think about, if I go into a field that I'm not familiar with, the first thing I look at is, okay, where is this in relation to the landscape? And I think all of our states probably have publications similar to this in the upper right, Soils in Nebraska, where we have diagrams of soil associations, such as you see in the lower left, which um, tells us where to expect different soil types and different parent materials in the landscape. Um, and you can get such diagrams in the soils, county soil survey report, such as for Yankton County in the lower, lower right. Um, and the position in landscape has uh, implications for erosion and sedimentation, but also for response to manure application. Soil texture is a, a result of the sand, silt, and clay content of the soil. And we determine this texture classes using a texture triangle. And maybe we have a silt loam, maybe we have a clay soil or, or whatever. And soil texture is fundamental to other properties in their interactions. We uh, might expect greater manure effect on soil physical properties for soils that are relatively high in sand content or high in clay content relative to many others. And with the diagram we have on the lower right, uh, it's for, you know, we can, soil texture is something we can approximate in the field using different types of field tests. Soil particles can be very small, like clay particles, we cannot see them with a, light microscope. We need an electron microscope to visualize them. And so if we did not have soil aggregation, our soil would essentially be a massive inert block. The size and strength of the soil aggregates uh, are, are affected by other properties, uh, including especially soil organic matter and including soil organic matter. And this we've addressed recently in a new extension publication on soil management for increased organic matter, but also by management practice and including uh, manure application. If I'm doing, often when I'm doing work in fields that I'm not familiar with, as in these two photos for, for Africa, I like to carry a number of things with me. And for the most part, they fit into um, a fisherman's vest, as you see um, on the ground here on the left and what I'm wearing in the upper right. But starting on the left here, uh, I have some uh, pH papers for testing pH. And next to it is a, is a meter for electroconductivity. I don't use these anymore because instead I have a meter that does pH electrical conductivity and dissolved total solids. 
I carry a spoon for measuring, a GPS unit, a clinometer, and one that I most use is a tea strainer, and that I can use for a quick test of um, soil aggregation in the field. There are the various cups for various tests, a pocket knife is handy, a, a marker pen, a cylinder for measuring soil water infiltration, and then a probe that I can disassemble and pack in my luggage easily for a probe for looking at deeper soil depths. And then finally, a simple uh, thing on the right uh, with the black handle uh, made up of a, a bronzing rod. And, and this is flexible. I can fold it up to fit into my suitcase and unbend it when I'm in the field. But it then uh, you can you know, easily and gradually carefully work into the soil uh, for the detection of any soil physical um, limitations to growth, whether it's a compaction layer or, or rock or something like this. So these are just some of the diagnostic tools that a person can be working with in the field. Susceptibility to erosion um, is you know, another property that's important to response to manure. Um, wind erosion and water erosion, with both we're most concerned about sheet erosion. That is the gradual movement of soil particles along the surface with water erosion, it tends to be down slope. Some of this occurs to the raindrop splash effect, uh, but then also the gradual movement of water down slope. It's the sheet erosion is our most erosive processes, uh, but it's often not noticed much more visible to us are real erosion as we see in the photo in the upper right. Uh, here we have a case of sedimentation in a terrace channel uh, showing that the terraces with the, the uh, tile outlet riser, you know, is very effective in preventing loss from the field. We have ephemeral gullies which are very noticeable for us and these would be typically closed with tillage every year and then our permanent um, gullies. Uh, the aggregate size and aggregate stability, that's it's very important to soil susceptibility to erosion as the small aggregates are easily carried and weak aggregates break down so that you have small or aggregates or dispersed soil particles. And uh, that makes for easy transport, but also sealing of the soil for crusting and reduced water infiltration. So one study I'll speak of uh, ran from 1999 to 2008. It was um, at our Eastern Nebraska Research and Development Center. The, the uh, soil was a silt loam soil with a 5.5%. We had 21 plots, each of uh, 0.01 acre, and then the runoff from these plots fed into two tanks where we could you know, measure the uh, amount of water and sediment and get our samples for analysis from each rainfall event or runoff, runoff event. There were 21 plots in total, uh, seven treatments with three replications. And I won't go into detail on the treatments, but uh, with many, there was composted feedlot applied, feedlot manure applied uh, for three years uh, in sequence, 99, 80, and 81. It was applied at heavy rates with the intention of meeting the nitrogen need of irrigated corn. So it's an unusual practice, but the study was set up this way. In the next few slides, we're looking at the effect of compost on runoff, erosion, and phosphorus loss. So in this figure, we have two pairs of bars. The blue is for where compost was applied, the purple with no compost application. The first pair is for runoff loss during the three years with the annual application. And the second pair is for the four years following application. 
So we see that during application, the years of application, our runoff was reduced by about 60% and uh, a 40% reduction due to the residual effect. Here the bars are colored differently, but again, we have compost compared to no compost, both during the years of application and during the four years following application. And it's for sediment loss. And we see that during the years of application, the sediment loss was reduced by about 40%. And during the residual uh, years, um, 60%. Using these results and results from other studies, we estimate that there's approximately a 2% reduction in runoff and erosion per ton per acre per year of dry weight of manure application. For the effects on phosphorus, well, first of all, let's look at the effect on soil phosphorus in the top one inch. And we use the top one inch here because that's what's susceptible to runoff and erosion. Where we had put on the compost, uh, it had brought the soil test P by Bray 1 up to 500 parts per million compared to uh, 20 parts per million with no compost applied. So a 25 fold difference. If we look at the loss of bioavailable phosphorus, however, we see that it is higher with compost applied, both during the years of application and and during the four years following application, but it's not near so great of a difference as we would expect from the soil test values. In years in five and six after the last application, uh, there was still reduction in sediment loss, 2.8 times as much sediment loss with no compost applied compared to where compost had previously been applied. Uh, other treatments allowed us to look at the time of application and incorporation. And we did not find any effects on runoff or losses of sediment or phosphorus for winter versus spring application without any incorporation, just applying it to the surface. And then with spring application with and without incorporation. And this, this is, the spring results are well supported by results from ISU. Iowa State University where um, if you have one or two moderate size rainfall events that do not cause runoff, before you have a runoff event, uh, you get enough reaction of the soil with the manure that um, you do not have an increase in phosphorus loss with surface application as compared to where the manure was applied. So in summary here, we can say that manure application tends to reduce sediment and runoff, but to increase the runoff phosphorus concentration. The actual P loss, the quantity loss may be increased or decreased, and it depends upon does the reduction in runoff and sediment loss fully compensate for increased runoff P concentration. In this study, the greatly increased, decreased erosion and runoff did not compensate for increased P concentration and runoff. And the P loss was somewhat greater where the compost was applied. So some of this information, specifically on erosion, the effect of manure application on erosion is in integrated in some decision tools, such as the and RCS Russell 2 for erosion estimation and the Nebraska Phosphorus Index, which also has a calculator for erosion loss. So we saw the manure application reduced runoff and erosion. What about its effect on soil aggregation? Well, to look at wet water stable aggregation, we use a set of four more sieves, which are stacked and the soil is put on the top one, and then it's the, the set of sieves is rotated through water, up and down in water, 50 times. And our sampling is from the one inch depth. For dry aggregates, uh, we measure these to look at determined wind erodible fraction, or the WEF. 
we consider anything that is, that is not in aggregates greater than 8.4 or millimeters or, or uh, greater than 0 0.33. Let, let me repeat that. If it's less than 0.84 millimeters and less than 0 0.0033 inch we, diameter, we consider it to be WEF, wind erodible. And we determine this by sieving dry soil through a stack of sieves and doing the calculation to get the, um, the amount of soil in WEF. So one study on aggregation that we'll look at is where we had treatments with composted feedlot manure, stockpiled feedlot manure, and no manure applied. And these on the x-axis of the figures are designated as uh, C for compost, uh, N for none, and, and M for stockpiled manure. We had, it, had this with tillage and no tillage, tillage for incorporation and no till. And we did it with Crete upland soil, which is a silty clay loam, and not away bottom, bottomland soil, alluvial uh, silt loam, but both prime agricultural land. We collected samples periodically starting two weeks after application and continuing for 150 days. Um, one of the results was that there was increased water stable aggregates, large aggregates, already two weeks after application. If we go back to the figure and look at the y-axis, we see we have percent of soil in soil aggregates. Our soil aggregate size is based on those sieves that we used. For the black color, it's greater than two millimeter diameter. The gray color is 0.25 to two millimeter. The white is 0 0.053 to 0.25 millimeter. Now 0 0.53 millimeter, that's about the size of a human hair. So we're talking you know, quite small. Um, if we look at the results we, and compare the non with the compost and the manure, raw manure, stockpile manure, we see that the black is somewhat affected. Not a large fraction of the soil is there, but that's one that's most affected. And we see that the total in what we call macro aggregates, that is greater than two millimeter, we consider to be large macro aggregates, 0.25 to two is small macro aggregates, and the white represents uh, mic micro, micro aggregates. Um, the result is that 39% of the soil was in macro water stable aggregates with either compost or stockpiled manure applied compared to 33% with no manure applied. We did not find any difference between um, um, compost and the stockpile and manure treatments. They appear to have similar effects. A second study was conducted in Northeast Nebraska. <laughs> Again, we sampled to zero to one inch depth and it was a silty clay loam soil. And their manure had been applied for four years continuously. With feedlot manure, it was 20 tons per acre per year. And with swine manure, swine slurry on a dry weight basis is 2.7 tons per acre per year. We found there that soil in the macro aggregates, and again, larger than 0.25 millimeter, uh, was 42% with manure application versus 35% um, with no manure applied. We did not find a difference in manure type and there was no difference in soil of less than 0 0.053. That is, uh, there was some effect on microaggregates. So in summary, manure effects on soil physical properties depend on the initial soil properties. Manure application tends to reduce erosion and improve water infiltration, but increase, increase runoff phosphorus concentration. This may result or in a decrease or an increase in runoff P loss. Uh, the manure effect is primarily to increase the macro aggregates, water stable aggregates. And um, that effect can occur very quickly if there is a rainfall event. And 
in one case, two weeks. Thank you.